All right, welcome everybody. It is September 28th and this is the Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. Um, everybody on a call has been here before, so you know about the antitrust policy and you also know about our code of conduct. Um, so those are the two things that we have to abide by in this call. Uh, for announcements today, we have the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you do have something that you want to include in that, please do leave a comment on the um, upcoming newsletter wiki page that is linked from here. I think this is the 2023 link, but uh, we just need to create that wiki page. Uh, the second one that announcement that we have is the how to create a currency management application and deploy it on Hyperledger Fabric Network Workshop. It's scheduled for October 12th. If you are interested in attending that call or that webinar, um, please do click on the registration link that's in the agenda. Any other announcements that anybody has that they would like to make? Okay. Uh, so the quarterly reports, I left the Firefly one on here because as of yesterday, I didn't think we had enough uh, to merge that. I think as of this morning, I did see a few uh, additional approvals come in, so we can probably go ahead and merge that after the call. Um, but any questions on the Firefly for those of you who've had a chance to look at it? No, okay. And then the, the Basie report came in yesterday. Um, that one is uh, obviously up for review from everyone. I think we've had maybe a couple of people take a look at it already, but uh, please do have a look at that one as well. Uh, the Caliper report was due last week. It has not come in yet. Uh, so it would be, uh, we, we should make sure that we go out and remind them that they have a report that's due. Um, so we can take care of that. I'm pretty sure that we've created an issue in their repo. Uh, so. Well, I'll probably just go comment on that particular issue. For upcoming reports next week, the Cacti and the Fabric reports are not next week, uh, two weeks from now. The Cacti and the Fabric report are due. Um, so just FYI uh, that those are coming up. Any questions on the reports before we move to the discussion items? All right. Um, so for discussion items, we do have a pull request that's come in from Stephen on the security policy and template. Uh, and then we also have the task force discussion on best practices for automated pipelines. So Stephen, I don't know, did you want to walk us through the security policy and template? We may have lost him. Hey, Stephen, are you still with us? Oh, that is a button. Um, yeah. Sure, happy to do that. Um, I didn't call it up yet, so let me just call that up, and I'll um, and I'll go through. Um, I love how Zoom changes from full screen to part screen mode. It's a feature. Yeah. It's not a very good feature. <laughs> Agreed. I sometimes wonder if people use the products that they create. They do because those all these things eventually get fixed. All right, back to Zoom. Sorry about this. I'll be there in a sec. Maybe this is why they wanted all the Zoom employees to come back to work. <laughs> See my screen, I assume. We can. Okay. Um, so, uh, actually, come back to this. The, my goal here was to take, to not uh, editorialize much in this, but rather to separate out into a uh, security template that is what we think are the best practices. 
um, and a document that describes the hyperledger policy, how it applies to projects, and um, indicates the places in the uh, template document where projects are are able to change and provide alternatives um, to what is in the the default best practices document. So if I come over to the, I'll start with the security template. Um, oh, 11 minutes ago, I was gonna say I hadn't seen comments, so that explains it. Um, so basically the only change that a, a uh, only changes that must be made are um, Hyperledger projects and capitals gets uh, everywhere projects is in capitals, change it to the name of your project. Um, remove these instructions sections and fill in the names of the security team members. Um, that basically uh, covers what's necessary to change it. Um, it does provide enough information for someone landing on the page for the project itself to say what is a vulnerability disclosure immediately goes into what is it, who is the, on the security team and outlines the responsibility of the security team. Um, this is both for to make sure that the security team members know what they're signing up for when, when the PR goes in to put their names in there um, and for um, members of the public or, or whoever lands on this page for the project to see that those roles. And then in here, um, notice how short this is. Um, these basically outline the particular um, rules that are to be followed, uh, that, that we recommend as a, as a TOC that every project follows. Um, that discussion forums exist and that they primarily be on Discord. Um, that reports can go into either emailing the security list or opening a vulner uh, vulnerability report. Um, that uh, CVE reporting be done and that GitHub be the numbering authority, um, that, that every project have an embargo, a private embargo list, and here's how it gets, how you get on it. And then a reference back to the main security policy that the project will publish security advisories and that it will use a private, the GitHub private um, deployment infrastructure. So if, um, barring good reasons, um, this would be the policies of all projects within when Hyperledger. So that's the security template itself. And so the idea there is um, this would be copied into the um, primary repository for the project, um, would be copied into each, each other repository of the project, or a pointer to this document uh, to the projects would be put into um, other repositories, so you, you're not copying the text. So that's the template. Any questions or comments at that point? Okay, um, here is the policy. And um, in this case, I basically took out um, oops. That doesn't look right. Instructions. Okay, I'm a little nervous here. This looks like a duplicate of the other one. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the template still. Okay, why is it not showing the other one? <laughs> Sorry about this. You have to uncheck that box that says viewed. Because on the bottom, if you scroll oh. down the bottom, there's a... When I clicked on this, I clicked the wrong one. I did it again. Okay, so what's happening here? Okay. So I'm trying new software that's altering my mouse, the mouse behavior. I think I'm struggling with it. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay, Phew. <laughs> so this is the full security policy. Um, and this goes in, this is in the TOC governance, and this is the overall policy. 
again about the document. Um, so uh, try to keep it pretty much clean. But the the biggest thing, uh, pretty much adhering to what was already written by those that actually formed the policy. I didn't form the policy. I I'm just trying to present it slightly differently. So. Um, uh, this talks about what is it, um, what's the policies and rules that are followed, what the security team has to do, the fact that each um, project must have a security team, and here's the guidelines for having a security team in place, um, requirements for, um, you know, must have at least three maintainers on it and, and uh, established early in the project and so on. Um, here's the, what I wanted to highlight. So in each of these sections or where it's appropriate in each of these sections, there's an alternative. Um, this section is either um, exactly what is in the template or has a bunch of verbiage to give more background, then it says what is in the template. And then it has the section called alternative. And this is where um, the items that were already in the project that um, talked about what alternatives were possible um, or are permissible, provided they align with the overall policy of hyperledger. So in a discussion forum, um, they may use other forums provided they um, details about the other ones must be included in the security policies. So projects may have other forums they use. If they do, they must um, provide details about those other forms. Report intakes. Um, here, um, they may accept security vulnerability disclosures by other mechanisms. And then I give the example of Hacker HackerOne. Um, the policy must document all of the alternatives. The projects must accept reports from the security list from the mailing list. So that's not an option to remove that one. So that's basically the approach of the overall policy. So you've got, um, again, in this one, the GitHub is the numbering authority. And then an alternative, you may list other, you may have another numbering authority and list it. There's a lot more detail in the embargo list. Um, so more information is provided about what an embargo list is and so on. So this is more or less the background for the project. Um, this is basically a repeat of what's exactly in the template. And then this is the alternatives, such as they may not have a uh, may choose document that they do not have an embargo list and the reason for not having it should be included. So, and finally, same thing for the security advisories and the private patch uh, infrastructure. That covers um, how I split it up and what I was thinking when I said we should adjust the policy in that way. Any comments, discussion? Peter. Peter. I just wanted to say that I think it looks good. Not much else. Thank you for putting it together. Sorry, it took so long. No problem. Hard. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Um, I think, you know, the uh, modularization will help people get started. So thank you for doing that. Wow. All right, any other comments or do we want to vote on accepting this t today? I could submit a motion. Okay, uh, Jim? Yeah, just one quick clarification. Um, so the the template gets uh, needs to be adopted by all the teams and then the advisory, um, how does that get communicated to, to the project? It, does that live somewhere uh, maybe in? 
uh, which DLC repository? Uh, I'm sorry, Jim, which advisory are you talking about? I think it, unfortunately the, that word came up multiple times. So, uh, so the first document that Stephen presented is the is the template that all projects should include in their in in their repositories. And there's the second document that tells the project team uh, how to use it. Do both it's, get merged into TLC? Um, yeah. So how do both, they live? Yeah, the template and the, so the the overall policy, the security.md in the TOC um, repository is the overall policy for Hyperledger and guidance for the projects. The template is what gets copied as the security.md file into the repositories of the mm -hmm. projects. And it links back to the TOC policy. So it's got a link in there back to the TOC policy paper. Okay, and the TOC policy thing uh, goes on the, a week, you said. Yeah. It goes um, on toc.hyperledger.org slash. Okay, that's, yeah, that's what I was trying to think whatever. Of. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks. Sorry about the delay. No worries. Good clarification. All right, so we do have a motion. Do we have a second? I second it. All right, thanks, Arun. Sean, did you want to take us to a vote? Happily. Uh, I will call out your name. Please say whether you are for the proposal for the security policy, uh, for the security, to approve the security policy and template against approving the security policy and template or abstain. Uh, Arun, how do you vote? Yes. Yeah. Marcus, how do you vote? Four. Rama, how do you vote? Four. Stephen, how do you vote? Four. David Inyard, how do you vote? Four. Arno, how do you vote? Four. Peter, how do you vote? Four. Bobby, how do you vote? Four. And Tracy, how do you vote? Four. Uh, it's unanimous, Tracy, on the security policy and template approval. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everybody who worked on the security vulnerability task force. Uh, got the got us to this place. Um, thank you, Stephen, for the template and the um, alternates, if you will, in the policy. I think this is going to be great, and we will get this merged in, uh, and then we will uh, communicate this. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Arun, you had a blog post that was. Uh, with the um, with the Hyperledger staff to get this announced to the greater um, Hyperledger community. Is that uh, still correct? That's correct, Tracy. I can get that proposed, um, get scheduled for publishing this week. Okay, great. Um, Jim, thank you for the four vote. I think we missed Jim. Is that uh, in the vote? But uh, Jim is a four as well. That was my mistake. Uh, I apologize. Uh, no Stepped yeah, over. No worries. Okay, great. Uh, so we will close out this uh, task force as uh, an item, and we'll um, continue from here. One sec. Um, I I should look at uh, Dave's comments before uh, before we merge it. So I haven't had a chance to look at those yet. So I'll take a look. That's fine. They they were nits, um, so a little grammar and a little formatting. So I think uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't change the change the policy or the template in any you know distinctive yeah. way. But we might as well fix the typos before. For sure. We... For sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, Dave. Yeah, uh, just right before we close out the task force, I will say Fabric is still on Hacker One. I think we would like to move off of it. Is, is that, does anybody see any problem with that? I usually work with Rye on this. He's not on the call, I guess. Rye's on vacation, but no, I mean, it's it's the maintainers. So it's whatever you all want to do. And do we still expect to maintain a bounty program? Because I think that was kind of documented through HackerOne, if I recall correctly. It was, yes. Um, so that is a, a question we have been meaning to address. Um, uh, so this is a longer discussion, I guess. 
Um, I'm not sure we want to get into it right now, but, um, you know, d talking about things like uh, security audits, bug bounty programs, et cetera, is something we definitely need to do. Um, it's in some ways a board discussion because of the amount of money involved. Uh, but this is a, an excellent question, Dave. And I, um, we should have a longer discussion about it at some point. Yeah, we don't have to do it now. I just wanted to bring it up. Thank you. It, yeah, it is on the radar. Okay. Hart, um, it's on the radar, meaning at some point in the future, you will bring that back to the TOC and then to the governing board. Is that my understanding? Uh, in some permutation of things, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I just didn't know if there was something I needed to add to the agenda for a future meeting for us to discuss uh, right now, or if it was a future sort of thing for us to take a look at. No, but if anyone has feedback on this, we would love to know. So this, you know, Dave's data points on HackerOne and other things are, are going to be great. All right, great. Anything else on this topic then? All right, so I think the next agenda item is off to Peter um, to talk about the automated pipeline best practices and, uh, you know, either update or let's have a discussion if we need to have a discussion in the, in the group to, to move this forward. A bit of both. Okay. I started working on a survey and I put the link uh, onto the Discord chat, but I also want to share my screen and go through the items very quick and then ask for opinion, feedback. So I'm, I'm using Google Forms and uh, actually but even before I get started with the questions themselves, the more boring part is that I set it up so that it does not collect email addresses, it does not need login. I don't know how good that's going to be, but I just prefer not to force people to have to sign in if they don't want to. Maybe it improves uh, the level of candidness that they will provide, which is what we are looking for. And so the questions, well, there's a little description, but uh, it just sets up the context that the run here already has. We are trying to improve things with CI for everyone. We're trying to make sure that best practices are easier to follow. And uh, the survey here, we hope that it will help us make decisions educated, or at least a little more educated decisions on what to include in the document and uh, in what format to present it, etc. So the first question I had is which uh, service or provider to use? This is, uh, I thought this is important because our assumption is that most people use GitHub Actions, but uh, I would like to actually validate that because if it turns out that one of the other options is way more popular, then we have to make sure to address that by way of uh, collecting the best practices for that as well. And uh, I tried to provide then other for everything or wherever possible, just so that people can uh, tap out and include whatever else they have, because I'm always a little uh, disappointed when there's a survey and they have a yes, no question that I either don't understand or it doesn't apply, or I'm not sure for some other reason what should be chosen. Uh, and then there's a, there's a long free form question about what are the pain points, if anything. I'm hoping that this will be the biggest value add of the survey, so I put it relatively early. Because uh, we could identify patterns of issues that people deal with that we might actually have an easy solution to. So that I would consider that to be the biggest win if uh, if there's the majority of people putting down something here that is a problem that we actually have a good solution to, then we would, that would pretty much be proof that the document will be very useful to whoever uses it. And it would also inform 
our priorities on where to put which piece of information because if something is a common issue then I think that should be front and center at the very top of the document even if our initial hierarchical organization of the points would uh, not uh, agree with that and then there's a, a few more questions that I thought might be useful to know for us. For example, if they are using uh, the CI to do publishing of their artifacts, this is uh, this might come in handy for future other task forces as well. For example, the uh, the artifact signing task force, and. Uh, it will also inform us on whether this is something where we should push a little harder because I think uh, automated publishing is something that it's hard to set up, but once you set it up, it's uh, very, very enjoyable that it actually works. And it uh, overall improves the software quality because the maintainers who are usually manually spending time issuing the releases can spend time on more useful things and then on the similar uh, kind of idea I'm asking about dependency caching and you, you'll see there's an option here to say I'm not sure which it seems obvious to me whether it should be true or false but I've also put myself in others shoes and maybe they say they will want to say I'm not sure which also led me down uh the path of questioning if someone wants to contact us as a task force where should that be and should i leave that contact information on this survey so i'm definitely take i, I will be taking advice on that as well and then the last question that uh no the one before the last question i came up with was how often do you have to deal with your CI? Is it kind of set it and forget it? Or or is it something that needs some sort of update very regularly? And this again feeds into the prioritization. If you have to change your CI every day or every week, there might be something going wrong in the sense that one of the best practices might be missing that could uh, make it more stable, uh, sort of generic enough that it can deal with changing requirements. And then another one is uh, if the hardware resources are enough. I'm asking this specifically because based on how I would respond to this survey, one of the things that we struggled with a lot initially on cacti is the fact that uh, the free tier virtual machines that we get with the github actions only have seven gigs of ram and we have to run multiple containers as part of the ci running different ledgers so that we can run our integration tests where the cacti connectors are talking to the ledgers and so working around this was not easy we spent a lot of time just optimizing our containers to use less memory. And uh, maybe this is very unique to the project, but I figured uh, I'll just include it to see. And so these are the questions that I've written down so far. And uh, I figured we could uh, put in there any other questions that anyone else thinks would be a good idea and we can do it as a little live editing session. You know, if you have a question idea, I'll just uh, put it right in. Uh, Peter, Tracy, has her hand raised? Oh, sorry. I was sharing. <laughs> Tracy? <laughs> no worries. Uh, the There's a couple things. So one, we can create a Discord channel for this task force. I'm actually surprised we didn't have one created. Um, so I think that's probably a miss on our part. We can add that. Um, the second question I have is around the um, package registry. Uh, so you have a true false um, sort of question there. 
do we want to know which package registries they use? Is that important or not important? Mm. To me, as I was thinking of the question, it wasn't. But uh, you're, yeah, it should be important because the best practices dealing with the specific registries can also differ. So maybe I should refactor this question saying multiple choice. And then which one do you use? Any of those or none? And then the question sense. captures the same thing. Makes sense. Mm. Peter, I just created the Discord channel for automated pipelines under TOC. Thank you very much. These for artifact publishing. Uh, there is a question from Marcus in the Discord. Uh, what about asking, number one, the usual CI execution time? Options could be less than one minute, between one and five minutes, five to 30, greater than 30. And the second question is, when is the CI usually triggered? Multiple answers possible. Nightly on push on PR. I like those ideas. I Sorry, I just need to finish typing this, but... Uh... I agree. Okay. GitHub, Docker Hub, NPM, Artifactory. And then, oops. I do not use any. And then other. Okay, so new question. How long does your CI execution usually take one minute sorry what were the options there i just put them in chat peter uh oh. the usual ci execution time options could be less than one minute between one and five minutes between five and 30 minutes and greater than 30 minutes yeah, see the cactus or cacti CI takes more than 30 minutes. It's, and it's uh, le less than one minute, not greater than one minute at the top, Peter. Oh. Got a, yep, thank you. And then and maybe, maybe, uh, maybe an option for I do not know or. Okay, so there's times, or you can be not sure, or you can write an essay. And if you write an essay, I will read it. So you've got all the options. Dave? For the CI question and for the registry question, you're asking what they currently use. We might also want to ask if they would like to move to another CI or registry. Okay. Are you happy with your current CI provider slash package registry? Well, I was kind of getting at like, do they have a preference? If they want, if they were going to move, do they have a preference? Okay, how do we phrase that? Or, or am I putting that in built into the existing question or a separate question? Just asking what is your- I would favorite? think a separate question right after that you ask the current question. Okay. Uh, okay. We have this and this. Okay, so after this, do you have a preferred package registry? See a provider that you would like to move to in the future. Well, I was I was gonna say for the CI question that came before this and for the registry question, we ask it oh separately. Separately. Okay. 
does it look good otherwise for, for the package registry? Looks good. Okay. Docker Hub NPM. Also, if anyone would like to add any other options. Uh, just let me know. These are the ones that I came up with just by myself. Or I do not want to move. I or I don't. Robin just oh, asked okay. about Matt Maven in uh in the chat, Peter. Okay, sorry, I'm coming around to it. So this, so I just duplicate this. But then package registry becomes CI provider, GitHub Actions, Circle CI, Travis CI, AWS GCE, GCP, and Azure. I'm happy or the other and I move this up so that we don't confuse everyone. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we ask you which one do you use and then do you like it or are you planning on moving away? Okay. And now checking Ramos question. Uh, Maven. Well, the thing with Maven is that Maven is the build tool, but behind Maven there's uh, JFrog, there's the Maven Central, there's a, a bunch of different registries that the tool itself can connect to. So I think if we said Maven, People will get confused because they you they would all use Maven to connect to these different registries. But we could ask as a separate question if they use Maven, Gradle, or Ant, which are all Java build or dependency management tools. If that's what you prefer. Okay, Ramo has a thumbs up, so I'm adding a new question. What build and dependency management tools do you use? And Maven, Cradle of NPM Yarn. Cargo, make files or make, see make. What else is there? Yeah, there will be a million of these. I do not use any. Heart. Um, Peter, forgive me if this was already answered. Um, are we asking people what projects they use? No, we could. Yeah, Wait, I think do that you might mean be which, good. Like which Hyperledger Foundation yes. project? Mm -hmm. That could be front and center. That's a good. I point. think that would be good. Yeah, that we that way we could. Uh, I think that would help us much better understand the results. Um, your projects, we do have people that use multiple. So it should be check boxes. Yep. Okay. Oof, this is where I get caught that I don't know all of them by heart. <laughs> oh, we have uh, pop quiz. Caliper, fire. 
Butterfly. Solang. Aries and, and on credits. Uh, Jim, you can't help him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can, and please do. <laughs> uh, I think an on credits is another one. I think that's it. Uh, Indy. 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 Uh, Shallow. Saw Sawtooth. The e no, no, no H, Peter. Yeah. Oh. D E L L. Like the and ex explore is not a project. Yes. Well, lab. Oh. Yeah, right. Labs. I mean, you could put lab. Well, we don't. I guess we don't offer this to labs anyway. Aroha. Oh, that's right. Devil. Sorry, hard. What did you say about labs? We don't usually offer. Uh, these services to labs. Uh, Peter, could you add Solang? And I th oh, you have Solang. All right, I think. But uh, GitHub Actions also exist on labs, right? Th that's true. That's uh, the usual. Do we deal with the labs as well or not? Question. I'm open to suggestions. But I guess you... we could just say other, and then people can specify the labs. That sounds or... good. Yeah. Yeah, I think this will let it, like, if we get half the people, this will let us interpret data better, I think. I agree. It, it gives us context. And now I get outed for not knowing the alphabet. Uh, sorry, I'll check if anyone else has their hands up. Did, no. did you all know that if you go to hyperledger.org and click on projects and all projects, it doesn't actually <laughs> do anything? Oh, really? Oh, I thought you were just going to tell me that I could have just went on the website and checked the list of projects. Well, I was like, well, we got to make <laughs> sure we got them all, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks for flagging that. It did work before. I guess it broke somehow. I'll, I'll file a ticket. Great. Thanks, David. Okay. Something like this. Yeah alphabetical order we could also change the order if if it should be in some other order but alphabetical is where i where my mind usually defaults okay so that's required as well i don't Maybe see any other that... hands mm -hmm. go ahead jim should that be multiple choices it is. It's checkboxes. Okay. So you can, if you want, you can tick all of them. Cool. Yes. So I'll probably wait a week or two for people to come in with more questions if anyone remembers any that they would like. But then assuming that we are there at that point in the future, we can talk about how to communicate this. Should we send this to the mailing list, Discord, or all of the above, none of the above? Because if we cast a two wide net, then the responses might, might be hard to process. But if you don't, then maybe we do it layered. At first, we could send it to just maintainers. I think we have tooling to message just maintainers. And by we, I mean Rai has scripts to collect uh that information. 
go ahead, Mark. So, Peter, I think also if you have more boxes for qualitative feedback, that might also be useful. Because um, you'll probably get some people that, you know, just don't care and do like a relatively low effort pass. Mm -hmm. But you'll also get some people really who really do care and they'll be willing to explain things. And, you know, written feedback uh, is probably going to be extremely useful here, right? So if you ask a question, right, which service provider do you use, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then do you have a preferred CRI provider you would like to move to? Then you could ask why, right? And then just have a... Oh, good point. If you answer yes to the to the question above and would like would like to expand on your reasoning for which we would be very grateful and please do so here. Something like this? Yep. Okay. And Something like that. This, Oh, 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 this is not easy. Okay, so we have this now for the CI provider and the package registry. I guess another generic one. Could be below you, this you, one. Just you could just do it. you could just do one at the very end. That's basically like if you'd like to provide any additional information on CI/CD, automated pipelines, whatever. Uh, you know, give us your information here. Right. Just uh, any other thoughts, basically, that you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's the easiest way. Otherwise, we we risk having just way too many questions, and then some people will drop off just because of that when they reach question eight, and then they realize that there's fifteen. Okay. Yeah, this is great feedback. Thanks everyone for the advice. All right, any other thoughts for this? Well, from my side, just the question of how to send it out. So it, is everyone thinking that it's a good idea to send it first just to maintainers? And then we can decide how and when and where to send it in addition to contributors or anyone else. I think maintainers make sense. Um, we've got the maintainers Discord channel, uh, and I think we have a maintainers mailing list, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, yeah, that makes it very easy. Okay, then I will put this on hold or on, on review for further review for anyone who couldn't make it today or who will need some more time to think through it. And, uh, we can finalize it maybe at our next session and then I'll send out the link to the maintainers mailing list and the Discord. Okay, Arun? Um, so 
just a small suggestion maybe at the beginning of this document it would be nice if we add a paragraph of what the survey is about okay thank you sorry i missed that no no problem if if there's something missing from that paragraph i'm also very happy to add that specific thing so please do read it if you if you think something's missing i'm happy to add it and i'm also happy to add you as a collaborator if you send me an email then i can uh, give you edit grades Okay, sounds like that's it for today then. Okay, great. Thanks, Peter. Uh, other uh, topics that we should discuss today? Um, I think there is one that comes to mind. Uh, in the BASU report, there is a question about, um, I think, the, the GitHub Actions, but I think that's potentially a question for staff and not a question for the TOC. Um, let me see if I can bring that up quickly here. So the question is, are there remaining ask of consensus around the CI that should be spelled out? Am I right in assuming that's a staff question and not a TOC question? That sounds correct, Tracy. That sounds like a staff question. I know Rai has been working with the Bezu team on some CI issues while he's on vacation. Um, so we'll I'll I'll check in with Ryan that when he's back on Monday. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, no rush. We've got two weeks before we'll merge it. So I just wanted to make sure that that was brought up as um, a question that was there. So any other topics for discussion today? Okay, if not, then I think the uh, next meetings task force discussion will be around the security artifact signing. So I think that's uh, the next topic up for discussion. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, and I was hoping that the documentation task force could get on the calendar for October 12th. Uh, okay, Thank October you. 12th, yep. Hart? Hey, yeah, I just wanted to say if we're discussing the artifact sighting, I'd encourage everyone to like read up on SIGSTOR before next week's meeting. I can post some links in the Discord chat if you're interested as well. That would be great. Rama? Uh, just a reminder to everyone that there's a badging and life cycle task force meeting tomorrow, same time. Uh, we missed the last one because I was unwell, but we uh, tomorrow. And when you can attend, that'd be good. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Roma. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in joining that uh, task force meeting tomorrow, um, you're obviously welcome to join and have a discussion on project lifecycle and badging. All right. Any other topics before we close for today? Okay, so thanks everybody for joining and we will talk again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.